In the veiled depths of the solar system lies an enigmatic mystery, Neptune's elusive moon, Triton. Buried in darkness, this seemingly lifeless moon hides features that defy explanation. Unlike other satellites, Triton orbits Neptune in the opposite direction to the normal one, defying the cosmic order. Its cold surface, surprisingly young, occasionally flashes with cryolava, revealing an otherworldly dynamism. But beneath the ice, shrouded in mystery, lies a dense layer that could be covering a bottomless ocean, a realm where extraterrestrial life may be kept secret. Come with us on this extraordinary odyssey to the outer reaches of the solar system, ready for a cold but exciting journey into the unknown. Neptune, a blue icy giant pierced by endless ultrasonic winds, is one of the most distant planets in our system, not counting Pluto. It is the only planet we cannot see with the naked eye because of its dimness. Fourteen satellites are orbiting the icy giant along with Triton. The strange icy satellite was first discovered in 1846 by British astronomer William Lassell through mathematical calculations rather than direct observation, due to the imperfect optics for such distant objects at the time. Triton immediately attracted the attention of the scientific community because of its differences from other satellites. All of them are much smaller and, except for some outer satellites, move in their orbit in the direction of the planet's rotation while Triton rotates in the opposite direction, or retrograde. In particular, scientists have noticed that the satellite is unusually similar to the famous dwarf planet Pluto. Their masses, diameters, and even the materials that make up the surface are very similar. But we'll talk about what role this plays for Triton a little later. The diameter of the unique satellite is 1,680 miles, which is almost seven times larger than the second largest satellite of the ice giant Proteus. This size allows it to maintain a thin atmosphere, which is mainly composed of nitrogen and methane. On top of that, the satellite's upper atmosphere has an ionosphere, a place where atoms and molecules are ionized and more intensely than on Earth. These factors are crucial for suggesting that Triton, like Pluto, may also be an icy dwarf planet. In addition, the ratio of rock to ice on the satellite is in the range of 70 to 30. This adds even more evidence to the planetary nature of Triton, and in particular hints at a different origin from all other satellites. It is therefore suspected that, like the Earth, Triton has a crust, a liquid mantle, and a rocky core. Because of its distance of 2.793 million miles from the Sun, Triton is one of the coldest satellites in the solar system. The average temperature there reaches negative 400 degrees Fahrenheit. The surface of the satellite is covered with a layer of frozen nitrogen under which there's a thick layer of ice mantle. All of this gives it an icy luster that reflects about 70% of the sunlight that hits it over a long period. In particular, its surface may be quite young, which also hints that Triton is not a dead stone at all, but a rather geologically active planet. Triton has a very interesting dynamic history of its surface development. Its outer layer has many small impact craters, although they should be much larger and deeper. This suggests that the satellite may be recovering. In addition, when you look at Triton in detail, you can see large ridges and valleys with complex patterns that look like the skin of a melon and smooth black stripes in some parts of it. However, it does not seem that they could have been formed only by crashing space objects because then Triton would be covered with huge impact basins. Therefore, astronomers have one possible answer to this characteristic landscape. 
a huge ocean may be hidden under the ice layer. Triton's surface is rejuvenated by a mixture of water and nitrogen that settles on its outer layer. But how does water appear on the surface? There are only two ways for water to fill the satellite's surface. Water can be poured out through strong meteorite impacts or its eruption through volcanic plumes in the outer crust. This is also hinted at by Titan's amazing nitrogen polar caps. Their formation depends on cryovolcanism. But wait, how can water erupt on such a cold moon? Triton is strongly influenced by Neptune's gravitational pull, which deforms the satellite's core causing tidal heating, which heats the water inside. In particular, solar heating can also be the cause of cryolava eruptions. Solar radiation passes through the ice, heating the subsurface nitrogen until it escapes through the crust. Water eruptions on Triton can last for more than a year, spewing tens of cubic kilometers of matter to restore affected parts of the surface. Heidi Hamill, a senior researcher at the Institute of Space Sciences, believes that such high geyser eruptions require a powerful source of heat and an ocean. However, the existence of the ocean has not yet been confirmed. There are several hypotheses about the nature of such a young surface. For example, heat from inside the satellite can melt pockets of nitrogen ice, which then erupt outward. In particular, cryovolcanoes may be fed by water not from the subsurface ocean, but simply from pockets of water in the crust. Triton raises many questions about its internal composition, and the only way to find out for sure whether Triton lives up to its name is through missions to the edge of the solar system. The first telescope to take detailed images of Triton was Voyager 2 in 1989. Flying over Neptune's North Pole, Voyager bent its trajectory due to the giant's gravity to reach Triton. At a distance of 25,000 miles, almost at the altitude of geostationary satellites, the telescope captured the very first images of Triton's surface and then departed forever into deep space. It's thanks to these images that we know so much about the mysterious satellite today. The Voyager mission provided a comprehensive characterization of the satellite, including its mass, atmosphere, and composition. For example, it was the mission to Triton that established that the atmosphere is dominated by molecular nitrogen with a small content of methane, which suggested that the satellite could be geologically active and gave rise to the study of the nature of eruptions. In particular, Voyager 2 proved that there are no oceans of liquid nitrogen on Triton's surface and showed the world the features of the satellite's surface. However, the mission to Triton saw only 40% of the satellite, its southern hemisphere, and only one side of it because the satellite itself is always turned with one side toward Neptune. Almost 33 years after Triton's first image, Space Telescope James Webb took a new equally impressive photo of Neptune and Triton, albeit at a much greater distance. Webb has captured the barely visible rings of Neptune and its seven moons for a very long time, but the largest moon of the icy giant has taken all the attention. To the left of Neptune in the image, you can see a very bright star-like object, but it is Triton. Such an outburst of the moon confirms its shiny surface of condensed nitrogen, which reflects almost all the sunlight that gets there. Although the photographs taken over the past 30 years have greatly advanced our knowledge of Triton, there's still not enough to build a complete map of the satellite and answer the most intriguing questions. Therefore, more expeditions to Triton are needed to make sure that all the guesses are correct. Triton's unusual orbit seems particularly interesting for further research. As we've already mentioned, Triton is one of the few satellites that moves against the direction of Neptune's rotation. 
Retrograde motion or counterclockwise motion of cosmic bodies is rare. Only a few satellites in the solar system like Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter, and Neptune have retrograde orbits. Moreover, Triton is also tilted by 23 degrees compared to Neptune's flat path as it rotates. Usually this tilt and reversal of motion is the result of a collision with another body. Therefore, some other object could have collided with Triton in the past the same way and caused the retrograde motion. However, this version is not currently popular in scientific circles. In particular, this scenario does not explain the size and similarity of Triton to dwarf planets. So, what's the main reason for the satellite's alien nature? Neptune's orbit passes right on the border with the Kuiper Belt, a region of the remnants of the solar system and its actual border. It's there that the dwarf planet Pluto is located. There's another possible reason for the formation of a retrograde orbit of a space body. An independent object moving at a certain speed and direction can be captured by another body with a greater gravitational pull. And since it's difficult to model the conditions under which Triton could have formed organically around Neptune, scientists have concluded that Triton was probably captured by Neptune's gravity into its orbit. It's now believed that the satellite could have been an object independent of Neptune in the past, once part of a double planetary system like the pluto sharon pair. The gravitational pull of Neptune is much greater than the relationship between two gravitationally bound small objects, so Triton could have become detached from another space body, in part by changing its orbital velocity. In particular, it's believed that Triton was headed for a collision with the icy giant but its companion planet could have brought it into Neptune's orbit, but was itself ejected from the solar system. But this lost planet was not the only victim of Neptune's gravitational pull. As we mentioned, 13 other satellites are orbiting Neptune. They can be divided into two groups, internal and external. And absolutely all of them have a very small mass. For example, Triton's mass is 99.5% of the mass of everything around the icy giant. Thus, Titan's migration could have destroyed Neptune's previous moons, leaving only small fragments behind. But this applies mostly to the inner group. The outer satellites could have been just as captured by Neptune as Triton, but the icy moon also left its mark here. The third largest moon, Nereid, has a highly elliptical orbit at perihelion. It approaches 858,400 miles, and at aphelion, it approaches 5,981,600 miles. It was probably knocked out of its normal orbit by a migrating triton. Although it managed to escape the fatal collision, damaging other satellites, its retrograde orbit means that Triton is moving slower than the planet's rotation speed, which is why it's gradually being attracted by it. Therefore, in a few million years, the icy moon is likely to be torn apart by Neptune's gravitational forces, forming a new ring. But while this gloomy scenario is in the distant future, Triton has another interesting feature that's worth exploring now. Even though Triton is completely covered in ice made of condensed nitrogen, the hypothetical ocean beneath this frozen surface layer could be warm and therefore harbor life. Water is a very important factor in the development of life. It serves as the main medium for many biological processes necessary for the birth of any living organisms we know, such as maintaining cellular structure. The ability to form life on Triton is influenced by several other important factors. For example, in addition to geysers that spew subsurface nitrogen, Voyager noticed another strange dark cryovolcanic plume during its expedition. The unusual black color of the five-mile-high plume is likely due to carbon-rich materials. Carbon is the basic building block for the formation of an organism from the simplest to the human-like. 
It is currently impossible to determine the exact composition of the hypothetical ocean, but scientists at the American Astronomical Society believe that Triton's ocean depends on the volatile composition of comets and therefore may contain a lot of ammonium, sodium, chloride, and oxygen. However, Triton is very cold, so it is unlikely that complex life as we know it could exist there. Furthermore, although the satellite has a nitrogen atmosphere, just like on Earth, it's very thin, so it will not be able to retain enough heat even with the help of nitrogen clouds in the upper layers. However, the temperature on Triton's surface can still rise, although not to very high levels. In 2010, scientists, using the Very Large Telescope of the European Southern Observatory, discovered that Triton also has seasons, just like on Earth but they last not three months, but 40 years each. Currently, summer is in full swing on the satellite. During this time, researchers from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology have found an increase in temperature from negative 392 Fahrenheit to negative 389 Fahrenheit. While this may seem like a small increase, it's a lot for a satellite that's so cold. That's why MIT professor James L. Elliott is confident that these are signs of global warming. For every nine years, the temperature could rise by another three degrees Fahrenheit. This means that the evaporated gas could have joined the atmosphere during this period and increased its volume. However, on Triton, the atmosphere cannot be constantly saturated. In the harsher fall and winter months, it will begin to thin until it freezes and settles on the surface. That is, in winter, the atmosphere on the satellite is simply absent and will appear only after it warms up in the spring. However, this does not exclude the possibility of simple, primitive life developing in the water of the satellite. Still, to check for sure whether Triton can answer the question, are we alone, a photo of Voyager and James Webb is not enough. Triton raises a lot of questions, remaining without understatement one of the most intriguing satellites in the solar system. And despite all the difficulty of flying to such a long distance, the curiosity of science still wins out to a certain extent. In the near future, a new proposed Trident mission from NASA was planned for Triton, which would last about 16 years, revealing the secrets of Triton and Neptune. The main goal of the mission was to study the factors that determine the habitability of the satellite as confirmation of the existence of a subsurface ocean and molecular building blocks. In addition, Trident would explore the remaining 60% of the satellite's surface, allowing scientists to see the entire geographical picture of Triton. However, Trident failed to win the grant for the 2021 launch, losing out on two other missions, Da Vinci Plus and Veritas which are going to explore Venus. Still, all is not lost for the mysterious Triton. China's also currently considering a nuclear-powered mission to Neptune. In particular, it's possible that NASA will reconsider Trident for an expedition in the future. Trident could reveal more important information about ocean worlds and their geology. Expeditions to Neptune's largest moon could not only find evidence or refute the presence of an ocean there, but if it is present, establish its approximate composition to better understand the possibility of life on the cold moon. The study of such hypothetical and sometimes active ocean worlds as Triton, Mimas, Enceladus, or Europa can change all our ideas about the origins of life and about objects with extreme conditions in general. Therefore, future expeditions will advance our knowledge greatly, closing many of our questions and opening up new mysteries for us. Perhaps soon enough, we'll be able to answer the questions of how global oceans form on icy planets and satellites, what makes them geologically active, and finally, whether we are alone. All thanks to the mysterious cold triton.